The Sports Journal question for the day sounds like a sports version of To Tell the Truth. Is this the Katerina Zabo, the European Junior Gymnastics Champion from Romania? Or is this the Katerina Zabo, the European Junior Gymnastics Champion from Romania? The girl on the left-hand side of your screen appears to be the real Katerina Zabo. On the right, Romanian Lavinia Agaki. On January 28th, Lavinia entered the United States, apparently using a passport that identified her incorrectly as a Katerina Zabo. The only time that, that one would ever look at the, at the passports of foreign athletes in a meet is, uh, is to, uh, uh, well, obviously, if a question would come up about an identity, I think they would, but as I say, in my 30-some-odd years, I've never heard of such a thing. Um, or for ticketing purposes. I had to pick up the returning airline tickets for the Romanian gymnasts, and uh, when I went out to the airport, they required that I needed the passport numbers. So when I told this to the interpreter, he gave me the names and the passport numbers, and I took those back, and the name was Zabo. The number, whether it corresponded from her passport, I can't say, except that that's what was punched into the airline computer. I asked them uh, who exactly he needs tickets. I need the correct spelling to uh, get the uh, proper airline tickets. This piece of paper is the one that the interpreter wrote on in the correct spelling, which I requested the names of the people that needed tickets to return to Romania. Lavinia came to the States pretending to be a Katarina in order to compete in the International Gymnastics Classic in Los Angeles. Her teammates and her coach, Bella Caroli, played their parts in the deception. Several of our coaches had birthdays in and around that weekend, so we were singing happy birthday to them. And somebody mentioned that it was, in fact, what we thought of as Zabo at the time. It was her birthday, so being congenial hosts, we decided, hey, let's sing birth happy birthday to her. And she stood up and we sang happy birthday Akadavina. Well, now I don't know whether, you know, Akadavina's birthday was in fact that day and she was in Romania or whether it was the girl who was there and we sang to somebody. I don't know where she was, but we did sing happy birthday to her. There were a few people at the meet in Los Angeles who questioned Lavinia's identity, but no one seemed suspicious enough to pursue the point. One of the other girls who was at the competition from the United States team, Amy Koopman, told me at dinner table that uh, this wasn't Zabo. She had seen Zabo before, and this wasn't the same girl. So I said, well, why don't we just ask her? I figured that'd be the best way to find out. So the little girl was sitting next to me, and Amelia Nicola, who was the junior uh, men's champion, was also sitting there. I asked him, I, because he could speak English, I said, well, what's her name? And he said, Zabo. And I looked at her, and she said, Zabo, and smiled right back at me. So, of course, we believed that uh, it was actually Zabo. Uh, we went through the whole competition, everybody uh, praising how good this little gymnast was from Romania. As a judge, I've been, you know, uh, seeing international gymnasts on a regular basis, either through photos or through competition. And when she began competition, I, you know, I recognized her as not being Zabo, but I was still a little bit uncertain in my mind that, it, you know, it wasn't her. Um, the first suspicions that I had were during the competition. Some of the girls in the competition had been to uh, an earlier meet in the fall in Japan where Zabo competed. And they said that this girl that was at the meet was not Zabo. And I didn't know, so I checked with some of our people who had handled the uh, transportation, picking them up at the airport and uh, putting them in their hotel and whatever. And uh, they said that, no, this was Zabo because this, these this kid had Zabo's passport. Ekaterina, or the so-called Ekaterina, placed third in the competition and returned to Romania. By then, there were Americans who suspected that there was something wrong. And the day after the competition, the interpreter told me that that, that was not Zabo in the competition. And then on March 5th, the Romanian team came back to the United States, first for an exhibition tour called Nadia 81, and then to compete in the American Cup. Coach Caroli was with his team, only this time the real Ekaterina was there, and so was Lavinia. Both performed, and this time the previous deception could no longer be kept quiet.
I went and participated in some of the performances, and I, I, I noticed that they announced this next girl up would be uh, Ekaterina Zabo, and I looked out there to see the friend that I had from Los Angeles, and uh, it wasn't the same girl. And so I started looking around, and uh, they, uh, they announced the next girl up as uh, Agake, Lavinia Agake. And so I looked, and that was the girl who was at the meet in Los Angeles. While we were on tour, I got to uh, be friends with Lavinia Agaki, and we were trading information, and she was teaching me Romanian, and I was teaching her English. And uh, we brought out the map of the United States, and we went over the places that we were going to be on on a tour. And I asked her if she had been through, through the Feather Gymnast, uh, Dumitrisa. I asked her if she had been anywhere else in the United States, and she said, yes, Los Angeles. I told her that her performance that I had seen on the tour was much better than, than in Los Angeles. And uh, again, through the Romanian gymnast that spoke English, she said, well, that's because she was appearing as another gymnast and that she did not want the other gymnast to receive credit for the skills that she performs as a gaki. At the end of the tour, Coach Bella Caroli, his wife Marta, and team choreographer Gesa Pozar defected to the United States. Ekaterina and Lavinia went home without their coach, leaving behind many unanswered questions. Why the substitution took place is a question only Bella Caroli can answer. But on the advice of his counsel, and because of his uncertain status as a defector, Mr. Caroli has declined to be interviewed. You see, when the Carolis defected, they left behind their seven-year-old daughter, Andrea, in Romania. And they naturally prefer to remain silent, at least until her status is resolved. But there are others involved, besides the Romanians, who can speak, who are accountable as well, and who can shed some light on how this happened, and perhaps why it happened. I am surprised that it happened because, again, I don't understand why it happened. I still don't understand why the substitution was made. Uh, it's not particularly uh, alarming that someone would do this because uh, um, I feel that when all is said and done, we may find out it was something as simple as uh, uh, an expedient on the part of the Romanian coach to uh, go ahead and have competition. and. He didn't realize the consequences of what he was doing. I have a feeling that the promoters and the people who set up the meet based a lot of the promotion and publicity on the fact that they would have the junior European champion from, uh, from Romania in this uh, Ekaterina Zabo. Uh, I know that she had been hurting part of the year, and so she might have had an injury problem or something and couldn't show. So I believe the, the Romanians decided to bring another gymnast. And I don't know where the mix-up came as to whether they decided that they would call her Zabo for the weekend, or whether the promoters encouraged, her, uh, encouraged them to call her Zabo for the weekend. There is a contract for last January's Los Angeles meet between the United States Gymnastics Federation and NBC Sports, which specifies that Ekaterina Zabo, among others, would compete in Los Angeles. The contract also says that a request for a substitution could be made in the case of illness or injury. But in this case, more than a substitution occurred, there was a misrepresentation by the Romanians. And that misrepresentation was good enough to deceive USGF officials, or so they say. We did not knowingly sanction a fraud, uh, nor were we aware until uh, a considerable length of time after the meet uh, that the possibility of a fraud had taken place. The fact remains that a deception took place, and the probability is that the United States law was broken. Now, the Federal Criminal Code states that anyone who knowingly aids or causes a person to enter the United States impersonating another could be found guilty of criminal fraud. If prosecuted for such fraud, any violators, including Bella Caroli, could face up to five years in prison or, under another federal statute, could face deportation. Bella was a participant in the fraud. He, uh, he knew those children. He knew that that girl wasn't Zabo, etc., and he passed her off as Zabo. As, a, as an agent of the Romanian Gymnastics Federation. At that time, he was in their employ, and he was possibly following orders from somebody above. Okay, and if it was a contractual thing, possibly the head of the Federation told him to do this. <clears throat> if um, I, in this particular instance now, since then, Bella has defected to the United States, and he's somewhere in the United States in hiding right now. I would um, hate to see this be a, in any way a bad mark on him uh, cause, because he may have not done this willingly. The Romanian gymnasts have gone and they have taken some unanswered questions with them, but these facts remain. 
One, the presence of Ekaterina Zabo and other gymnasts was required by the contract between the USGF and NBC. Two, Lavinia Agaki impersonated Ekaterina Zabo in the International Gymnastics Classic. Three, it appears Ms. Agaki entered and left this country using a passport that identified her as Ekaterina Zabo. Four, Although the meet director, Don Peters, learned of the fraud the day after the meet ended, he did not notify NBC of the fraud, nor was NBC ever notified of such by any USGF official. And five, the USGF denies any prior knowledge of the deception. Now, all this we know is fact. The unanswered points perhaps could be resolved by Bella Caroli, but he remains a silent figure, and understandably so. Not only is his daughter, Andrea, still in Romania, but if he knowingly participated in the fraud, he could face legal penalties. Now, why did Lavinia masquerade as a Katerina? Who made the substitution, and what did they stand to gain? Did Bella Caroli have a choice or a voice in the decision? Was the substitution perhaps even an opportunity for Caroli to plan his defection, which was to come two months later? All those points of the mystery must, for the moment, remain unsolved. But we will continue to pursue the end of this story and keep you updated on the developments as well as Bella Caroli's status. I'm Bryant Gumbel for Sports Journal.